G'day and welcome back to the Project 200 video series. If you've been following the build for a while, you'll know that I previously installed a set of standard Firestone helper airbags to assist with heavy loads. Airbags provide a best of both worlds solution, allowing you to retain good ride quality when unladen, but providing the capacity of heavy duty springs when you load it up. But I'm now upgrading the standard Firestone bags to a high pressure kit from Airbag Man for a few key reasons. Firstly, the higher pressures possible using the Airbag Man kit mean increased weight capacity, which will be useful for a planned GVM upgrade. Secondly, the unique high strength fabric sleeves that come with the Airbag Man kit are more resistant to damage or punctures than standard bags. And finally, there have been a couple of occasions when using the existing airbag lines that they've become damaged or kinked during severe suspension movement, leading to air leaks. The Airbag Man Kit provides much greater protection for the airlines, which should eliminate this issue. At the same time, I'm also installing an Airbag Man Air Control Kit. This attaches to my existing compressor with two paddle switches for inflating the bags, plus a dual digital gauge. The paddle switches will be installed into the dash, and the gauge will be installed into this pod on the A-pillar, meaning that the bags can be controlled and monitored from the driver's seat. Please enjoy this step-by-step -step guide to installing the Airbag Man High Pressure Airbag Kit and the AC1030D Air Control Kit into a Land Cruiser 200. If your vehicle has KDSS, begin by loosening both KDSS shutter valves three full turns and no more. Then jack up the rear axle and support it on chassis stands. Remove both rear wheels and for extra safety lay them down under the chassis. You'll then need to disconnect the rear sway bar from each side of the vehicle and remove the shocks from the lower mounts. To ensure the rear axle can be lowered enough to remove the springs, you'll need to disconnect the diff breather hose and the brake line bracket from the top of the differential housing. You can then remove the rear springs and the bump stops. The bump stops need to be cut down to fit the airbags. Cut off the lower four segments of the bump stops, leaving just one segment, and check to ensure that the surface is smooth with no burrs. You then need to enlarge the hole in the bump stops to approximately 35 millimetres, again ensuring that there are no sharp edges. You can then fit the fabric sleeves over the airbags, ensuring that the tapered ends of the sleeves sit evenly on the shoulders of the airbags at the top and the bottom. Next, insert the airbags and the sleeves into the coil springs, ensuring that the valve is at the top of the spring. If required, readjust the sleeves so that they're positioned correctly on the bags. You can now move on to preparing for the airlines. The airlines will enter the cab through a grommet near the rear seat on the driver's side. Remove the rear scuff trim as shown, then cut across into the rubber grommet. Next, remove the driver's scuff trim and the footwell trim panel. You then need to remove the lower trim panel on the B-pillar. Because I'm installing the air control kit into the cab, the protected airlines that come with the airbag kit aren't long enough, so I'm transferring the split tubing onto the longer lines that come with the control kit. I suggest putting a strip of red tape onto the right side airlines at each end to make them easy to identify after you've run them. Next, run the protected ends of the airlines down through the upper spring seats and leave enough line to allow full suspension travel. To install the air control kit into the cab, you need to run the passenger side airbag line over the cross member to the driver's side chassis rail. Secure the lines with cable ties, ensuring that they're away from sharp edges and heat sources, such as the exhaust. You can then pull the two airlines up through the grommet and run them along the sill with the electrical wiring. Run the airlines from the rear through to the front securing them into the plastic clips along the sill as you go. You can then seal the rubber grommet with some silicon. Next, it's time to run the supply line between the paddle switch location on the dash and the compressor under the bonnet. Begin by attaching the airline to a piece of rigid wire. You can then push the wire through the factory firewall grommet into the engine bay. Then use the wire to pull through the rest of the airline. 
run the air line across the engine bay to the compressor. Install the fitting that came with the air control kit onto the compressor or the manifold. Then push the air line into the fitting. Ensure the air line is well secured away from sharp edges or hot objects. With all the air lines now in position, it's time to move on to the gauge and electrical connections. To keep the installation tidy, I'm installing the airbag man gauge into a pod on the A pillar. I'm extending the three wires on the gauge, with the red wire running to accessory power, the purple or blue wire going to dash illumination, and the black wire going to earth. I recommend that electrical connections be soldered for reliability, and then protected with heat shrink tubing. The gauge can then be installed onto the pillar pod and secured with the included bracket. You can then attach the two supplied pressure sensor cables to the fittings on the rear of the gauge. You then need to remove the factory trim panel on the A-pillar. Begin by removing the cover clips on the grab handle, then remove the two securing bolts, and finally the handle itself. You can then remove the A-pillar trim panel, taking great care not to damage or interfere with the side curtain airbag or its wiring. You can then install the new pillar trim with the gauge pod. Run the gauge wires down behind the dashboard, then insert the lower edge of the new trim into position and align it with the grab handle brackets. You can then refit the handle and replace the bolts to secure the new trim in place. Again, ensure that you do not interfere with the airbag. It's now time to begin making the airline connections. Ensure you always cut the air lines with a dedicated trimmer or a sharp knife. Don't use scissors or pliers or you'll damage the line and cause leaks. Trim the air line going to each airbag, ensuring that there's enough to allow for full suspension travel. Thread it through the bump stop and the black support piece as shown before you push it into the fitting on the top of the airbag. Don't reinstall the springs at this stage. You can then move on to the connections to the paddle switches. Pre-cut some short lengths of red airline and connect them between the inlet valves of the switches and one of the supplied junctions. Then take some short lengths of black airline and connect it to each paddle switch's outlet fitting, then to a junction, and then connect one side of each junction to a pressure sensor, all as shown in the video. You can then pull all the required lines and cables through the hole in the dash for mounting the paddle switches. You'll have a red supply airline from the compressor, a black airline from each airbag, plus the two pressure sensor wires from the gauge in the pillar pod. You can then make the connections to the paddle switches, connecting the red supply lines together and the left and right airbag lines to the correct left or right paddle switch. Here's where the band of electrical tape applied earlier comes in handy, because you can identify which airline goes to the right side airbag. You should now activate the air compressor and pressurise the system and the airbags to the maximum 60 psi. Then spray all the air fittings with a soapy water solution and ensure that there are no air leaks. If you do find any leaks, disconnect the leaking fitting, recut the line, reconnect and retest. You can carefully and as neatly as possible feed the airlines, cables and pressure sensors back in through the dash hole until the paddle switches are properly located into the dash. Tidy up and secure all the cables and airlines behind the dash with cable ties, ensuring there are no kinks in the lines. You can then replace all the interior trim panels by clicking them back into their original positions. Beginning with the lower B-pillar trim, clicking the plastic retaining clips back into position. Next, refit the front driver's kick panel and the driver's scuff trim. Finally, click the rear scuff trim back into position and refit the retaining bolt and cover piece. Then move back outside the vehicle and finish the spring and airbag assemblies by placing the black support piece down over the air fitting on top of the airbag followed by the bump stop. Then refit the assemblies to the vehicle, ensuring that the airline is not damaged as you feed it up through the spring seat, and that there's sufficient slack in the airline to allow for full suspension travel. You can then raise the axle on a jack and replace the sway bar linkages, shock absorbers, brake line bracket and diff breather hose. 
Ensure you use Loctite to prevent the bolts from coming loose. You can then replace the wheels and tyres back onto the vehicle. Remove the chassis stands and then lower the vehicle back to the ground. If your vehicle has KDSS, re-tighten the KDSS shutter valves. I hope you enjoyed the installation of the Airbag Man Heavy Duty Airbags and Air Control Kit into the 200. There's plenty more information, including links to find the correct parts, plus photos of the installation on the Project 200 website. See you next time.